I was hoping you were going to stop by. So much so, I saved you a seat right there in the front. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday. It's August 21st. Which means I've got a live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor, we go on live for about an hour and a half, taking requests for hot penny stocks from viewers like you. I share hot stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share one with everybody. I'll go over the information, Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you our opinion, whatever that's worth to you. Now, I do go by first come, first served, and I do announce that I'm going to have this show earlier in the day, around lunchtime. And when I drop that announcement, immediately the tickers start dropping into the comment box. Well, by the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I've pretty much got all the stocks I can look at. So what we've done, to be fair to everybody, is we saved two spots during the show. Drop your ticker during the show. Taylor's going to choose the two hottest penny stocks out of them. Don't necessarily mean it's going to be all about the chart, but that's normally where the heat's at. That is 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, every Thursday. So what I like to do on this show is to share some due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks you find on every single market. And I'm always looking for a stock that has heat, that has potential to make us money. And normally I find those stocks looking at the charts. I can look at a lot of charts in a little amount of time. You can't read a lot of news and filings in a little amount of time. And at a glance, I can see if there's heat in a chart. You can see a breakout setup. You can see big bounces. You can see a strong run. Well, when you see a chart that has heat, take the time then to go through the filings and the press releases of that one particular company. You're looking for some hot news, not just in the last day or two. A hot chart doesn't need a big, fresh catalyst. Any catalyst will get it to run. Think of it as the fire, and the catalyst is just extra wood you're throwing on that fire. How much wood does it take to make a fire burn bigger? Not much. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. Well, I've got one for you. This is SLGL Soul Gel Technologies. Now, there's nothing super special about this stock to me except the chart. I don't know a whole lot about the company. I've seen it off and on before, but today the chart caught my attention. Matter of fact, all the charts caught my attention. The four hour, the one hour, the 15 minute, they all look good. They're all in breakout right now. And we do have some information to back that up. So, SLGL. She finished the day just under 60 cents at 59 cents, and she was just about 31.5% gains today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange. Penny stocks on the major exchange come with benefits compared to the OTC. One, and one of the most important to me, they're safer. There's a lot more rules these companies have to abide by up on the major exchange, which is just making our investments safer. Plus, there's no transaction fees on the major exchange. You can trade pre-market, after-market, and let's face it, there is a lot more money and volume up on the major exchanges. So what is SLGL all about? Well, let's dive into a most recent news press to learn. We're told over here that Soul Gel Technologies is a dermatology company focused on identifying, developing, and commercializing drug products to treat skin diseases. Soul Gel developed two drugs, Twineo, which is approved by the FDA for the treatment of acne vulgaris in adults and pediatric patients nine years of age and older, as well as Epsole, which is approved by the FDA for the treatment of inflammatory lesions of rosacea in adults. They've got another drug as well. This is in late clinical phase trials, phase three. It has also been given orphan and breakthrough drug designations as well. Now, we've actually only got a few pieces of news here to consider, so we're just going to look at all three of them right now, and this is one of them. Sojo announces the signing of six exclusive license agreements to commercialize the drugs in Europe and South Africa. The company today announced it has entered into six exclusive license agreements with, and there's the name of the six companies right there, for the commercialization of the drugs covering the majority of European countries, and they list 26 different countries there. They tell us that the new collaborations are in addition to existing agreements that Soul Gel has already signed in the U.S., Canada, 
and China, emphasizing the trust and the significant commercial potential for both drugs. Now they tell us this recent deal here is supposed to bring them regular milestone payments of seven digits. We're talking millions of dollars. Well, they give us more information over here in a more recent news press. These already signed agreements, together with agreements we anticipate to sign in the future, are expected to provide upfront and regulatory milestone payments of up to $3.7 million. Based on the forecast received from Sogel's current potential partners, it is anticipated that the royalties will be approximately one to $2 million in 2026 and growing gradually to approximately up to $10 million for the year 2030. Now, as I said, they do have another drug in late clinical three phase trials. This is the very last phase trial. You get out of phase three, you're ready to go on the market. You just need to get a license from the FDA, a PDFUA, I do believe it's called. The phase three study is for their SGT610 drug. And this is for the prevention of new BCC lesions in Gorlin syndrome patients, whatever that is. They also have another drug that they're working with in preclinical trials, hasn't even got through them yet. Sogel's proof of concept study for the SGT210 is completed for patients with derrier disease. Again, I'm not sure what that is either. The third piece of news came out back in May, and I don't see anything else out about this, but they got a notification from the NASDAQ that they are not meeting up with the minimum price requirement for the NASDAQ. You can't be under a dollar on the major exchange for too long. You're under a dollar for too long, you get a warning just like this. And they tell you, you get 180 calendar days to become compliant. Get that price up over a dollar, which is six months. Now really, it's not up to the company. It's up to me and you, the investors. We have to bid that price up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. We do that, they're out of hot water. Everything's good again. We dip underneath the dollar again for too long, we just start the whole process over. Now, if we do not bid that price up over a dollar, then the company can do something about it. It's called a reverse stock split. We don't want that. And if they don't do that, the only other option is to be thrown off of the major exchange down to the OTC, and we don't want that either. Now, they have a date here of November 18th, that's when they have to get into compliance. Up till then, they can be under a dollar. Nothing's going to happen to the company. By November 18th, we better have had 10 days under our belt straight of breaking a dollar. Now, I did just read that in September, this rule is going to be changing. They are going to be going from 180 calendar days, six months, to a full year. So whenever they get a warning and they're told, you've got so many days to fix this, it's going to be 365 days at that point in time. So that's what's going on with the company right now. They've got some new contracts, six of them. They are now in 26 new countries. They told us they're already in uh, China, Canada, the United States. So they've got a lot going on. What was the relative volume around SLGL today? She's up a little bit. But being on the NASDAQ, anything under a million shares is kind of under the radar, wouldn't you think? Over the last 30 days, she's been doing a daily average of 674 million shares. Ah, my bad, 673,000 shares. That's what makes her under the radar. We wish it was millions. She's bumped that up today to 814,000 shares. Share structure for the company. Well, that's good, that's real good. Outstanding share count is less than 28 million. We don't know what the float is. They don't tell us what the insiders own, so I can't calculate it. What I do know is that the float is never more than the outstanding share count, so there's no way it's going to be higher than 27 million. And considering the insiders are going to own something, it's going to be less, maybe considerably less. And anything under 100 million, honestly, folks, a float under 100 million is not bad. We get spoiled here recently because there's been so many reverse stock splits. There are lots of companies that have really low floats right now. Market cap for Sojel, we're at about 12 and a half million. What are the financials like? Well, looking over the last four years and remembering to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts, 
Four years ago, we were at 8.7 million. <whistles> really jumped in 2021 all the way up to 31 million and then dropped all the way down to 3.8 million. E gads. And then we've done less than half of that. Now we're at $1.5 million. And strange enough, I see they're not paying anything for any of the money that they're making. They don't have any overhead. So I'm not presuming they're making drugs. They probably licensed out all of these drugs. They don't have to manufacture any of them. They don't have to package them. They don't have to distribute them. So there's no overhead. You license out the rights to other companies to sell the drugs. They take care of all of that. This company just gets paid licensing fees. I'm believing that's what we're looking at here. Balance sheet. Nope. Quarterlies. Let's not rush this. Okay. Balance sheet for the company. Remembering those three zeros here too. Cash and cash equivalents. I call the bank. We got about seven and a half million there. Total assets isn't bad. About 45 million. Oh, total liabilities is good. We're at 6.6 .6 million. So we do have some strong stockholder equity here. This is all for us, 38 and a half million. Now, if you take the shares, which was about 27 million, and you divide that into this, 38 million, you should get a price for what the stock should be worth based on assets. There's a lot of different ways to figure out what a stock should be worth, but that's one real easy way. Taking a look at the disclosures now for the company. All right, this 424B3, this 6K, this 6K, they all have to do with the financials that just came out. Oh, stop the bus. It just occurred to me. We need to look at these financials. I overlooked that. All we saw is the way they ended at the end of 2023. We haven't seen anything for this year. So we're going to dive into this 424B3. And we're going to scroll down to the blue boxes to get our numbers. Shouldn't be too far down here. There we go. So we've got our current assets right here. Coming down to total current assets. We have $45 million. We know it's millions here because, again, they tell us to add three zeros. Total liabilities, $6.5 million. So we do have about $38, $39 million in stockholder equity. Now let's get the revenues. That's what we're really after here. We do have revenues right here. We're looking at the last three months ended June of this year and comparing that to the same period last year. Last year, during that three-month period, they did just about $600,000. This year, we did $5.4 million in the last three months. Think about that. Our financials, we just saw that last year's entire revenues was 1.5 for 12 months. Now we've got revenues of 5.4 million for just three months. Folks, we're looking at over $20 million at this rate for this year. That is going to kick the heck out of all the years before. So we've got new contracts, six of them, which has now engaged 26 countries in Europe. We've also got China, Canada, USA, Two drugs and a third drug getting ready to come out of phase three and go on the market. Everything looks great here and everything looks great on the charts too. Let's go take a look at those charts now. I got a lot of sexy charts to share with you. We're looking at ticker SLGL on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. And I got Sojo opened up to a six month, four hour view. And as you can see, she's been in a downtrend the entire time. Back in February, we had a high of a buck 57, and August 5th, we had a low of 33 cents. Now, it was right here in July. It was looking very promising for a breakout. We had all the SMAs climbing, pushing up towards that 200, squeezing the price up against the 200. The price kept beating its head up against that 200 and getting squeezed over top of it on many occasions. And then right here, when the 200-day SMA went flat, all the SMAs crossed it. This should have been a super duper power sign. Instead, the price was falling. Then we got a tricky wiki. We have this fake recovery bar dropping down to 60 cents and then popping all the way up to $1.13, looking like she was ready to start running again. Then she pulled the rug out from underneath us, dropping from a buck 13 all the way to 35 cents. 
She bounced off of that just to hit her head on the nine-day SMA and dribble down to that low bubble of 33 cents. Now, the great thing about that low bubble, it stopped our downtrend. We're not falling anymore. Now she was going sideways. And though she looks like she's doing nothing, she is making headway in a big way down here. She is silently crossing all of the SMAs. We got over our 200 haul, the 20, the 50, and now she's gotten confident. Strength is in the picture. She's jumped up onto her nine day, floating on it, climbing, and getting very excited today. Starting to push fast towards that 200, which is just about flat. A perfect time to break out. And everything else is perfect here as well. Exactly the way I look for it. One, we've got our 200 haul down here. 200 haul is like your 200 day MA. Both take 200 days of prices, average them together. But the 200 haul puts more credence on current prices. So it can relate to the price, which means the price can relate to it. And I've seen a special relationship here between the price and the 200 haul. And this is a perfect setup. When the price is in between both 200s with the 200 haul at the bottom, just turning up and your other SMAs are also turned up, man. We're talking like a 9.5 out of 10 chance this thing is going to blast off. It's looking really, really good to me. What do our oscillators say about the strength? Well, starting today, everything got real strong. Things were climbing the last few days, but they've all popped today. My PPO, percentage price oscillator, is pushing up fast. MACD, which is a lot like your PPO, MACD uses the full price. Percentage price oscillator, my PPO uses... Right, a percentage of the price. Both of these are pushing up. Green bars coming into the picture strong. And our RSI has been climbing really hard. Got all the way up to 74, has pulled back to 68 and looking good, folks. Now, before we leave this page, let us grab some supports and resistances. We got to know where to get in and get out of these. That's what they're for. They're not just rungs the price climbs out. These supports and resistances tell me when to get out. When it comes underneath one of these lines and starts butting its head up against it, it could fall. I may consider getting out there. But when you get on top of the line, now you're on a support getting ready to jump and bounce to the next one. This is where you get in. So my supports and resistances. I'm going to grab one up here at about 98 cents. And you know what? I'm going to grab the rest off of this drop right there using my Fibonacci. It's a lot easier. Grab your Fibonacci. And a big surge up or a big drop down, poke the extremities. I normally start at the top and work my way down so that my lines climb up. There and there. These are now algorithmic supports and resistances that are not attached to any historical price point where I just got this one from. But they're valid. I can trade on them. The price is going to respect them. So, the first thing I normally look at when I get up my Fibonacci is the middle. It's called the 50% mark, which is dead center between the top and the bottom. Dead center is the exact middle, a perfect average, which is what algorithms like. So the price normally works to get back to that 50% mark. Anything underneath 50% is the red zone. It's the loss zone. Anything above it is the green zone. It wants to climb here. Right now, we are on that 50% perfectly. It is at 58 cents and we're at 60 cents sitting on top of it. That is a great placement to start pushing up and climbing. Our next one is at 64 cents, just up underneath that 200 MA. Everything looks picture perfect to me. I'm getting excited here. Drop on down to that 20 day, one hour view. All right, I know it's tough to see through all the lines, but we need those lines. So our 200 day was falling hard and fast. Right here, she started the level off as we broke through it. Everything is breaking through it. All of our SMAs and our price. Our price is bouncing off of the 200 here, bouncing off of it here, and now she is running, folks. This is looking very strong. 200 is just now starting to lift up with all the SMAs above it also climbing. Our oscillators, 
They have a lot of strength, but the aftermarket period right now, the last two bars are starting to cool things off, but you need the stock to come down. If it keeps going up, 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 and not coming down at all, it's getting too far away from the other SMAs. And there's rubber bands attached between every SMA and the price. If you get too far away, it'll snap you back. Wow. <laughs> it'll pull you right back. So we do need for it to come back under controlled circumstances. And we see she is bouncing off of her nine with this pullback. So everything looks good here. Let's come on down to our 15 minute. It's a lot like your five day, five minute. It's just not as cluttered. Wow. What a perfect chart. We got a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble in that corner really doesn't matter what happened in the middle. She started nice and ended great. We had a low bubble back here of 38 cents on top of our 200 day SMA bouncing off of that 200. Then she pushed herself onto the 50. She's bouncing off of the 50 climbing on her nine. Now she's bouncing off of the 20. You see that she went from the 200 to the 50 to the 20 on her bounces. That means the price is getting lighter. It doesn't have to fall as far to get its bounce on. And it's getting another bounce on right now off of this 20 day SMA. We are watching it. This is the biggest red bar we've had since pre-market. So we're going to keep our eyes on this. Everything looks good though. All of our SMAs are climbing nicely, evenly spaced, lots of volume today. Osculators are cooling off because of the aftermarket thing going on right now, but overall, I'm liking SGL. I think all the charts look really strong. We've got really strong revenue growth here, and that's the kicker, ain't it? They did over $5 million in three months when they did barely $1.5 million for the whole year last year. That's what it's all about, revenues. So this company's got catalysts. This company's got hot chart. It's got every reason to move. Now, the only thing it probably needs is a little more due diligence from you because I didn't share everything with you and it is your money you're investing. And since I'm not licensed, I can't tell you what to buy or what to sell. So please go do some due diligence now. Remember, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See you, folks.